Yes, yes. Shalom, shalom, Chavarim. Shalom right here, here, here. Let's touch on this right here. Let's get some more quiet. All right, so so right here, so right here, Ethiopians. Um, his brother did this one, um, West African. I uh, did this, uh, and a few other people also touched on this. Even some Ethiopians have given um, some words, um, statements, uh, points of view, commentary, some pointing to ancient Ethiopian highland, highland Ethiopian tradition. Now I have to really state that right there, highland Ethiopian tradition, a particular tradition that sometimes is referred to in academic circles as Judeo-Christian. Judeo-Christian is one of the terminologies that's, that's used. Now, Ethiopians, let's first of all just address the <laughs> the Ethiopian in the room, right? Ethiopians are not African, or are we stating that Ethiopians were not African? Now, there was a very good website, oaucreation.com. Um, I don't think it's up there now. I think we backed up from their certain archives. I'm going to look into the archives because it's a brother, um, brother Yilma, Yilma. I get his full of full name right now. I don't want to miss, you know, certain names are very specific, but I know that Yilma's in, in his name. And he was a particular minister, servant of the King of Kings and the kingdom of the conquering line of the tribe of Judah during that visible manifestation. That right there is very interesting when we look at the book of uh, Metzhafe Hanok, Metzhafe Hanok for the two comings, the two comings, what's often referred to as the first and the second coming, you know, of Christ. And we look in the Metzhafe Hanok, right, of Hanuk, right, we see that there's a Messiah of the parables, the Messiah born of woman, right, that seed, you know, with the seed of the woman. And then there's also um, the second advent, where he's like a kind of an ordinary man, but man, but more than man. And we see that as you know, in his times, he shall shew who is the blessed and only potentate, the king of kings, Lord of lords. Yes, I, conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Kedemawi, Haile Selassie, Hakadosh, Baruchu, Baruch Hashem. Now, here, 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 just to address this right here, and while we mention his imperial match, even this day right here, 91st anniversary, just to put that on the record, 91st anniversary of the anointing, the anointing and the crowning of Negus Ras Tefari Kedemawi Haile Selassie. The first of all the Rastafari is the Rastafari Kedemawi Haile Selassie. And also the crowning of Itege Menin of Kedemawit Walete Georgis. And it's very, very important to note, you know, the Sara, the Sara Ainai Rastafari Sara and Thus, therefore, I and I Rastafari Avraham just had touched on the Chaye Sara. Now, to some of the, we say the Ethiopian Yehudim, the 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 Black Jews of Ethiopia, and those who are into that part of the tradition or who are aware of that part of the tradition, will understand, you know, what we're referring to right there in our Torah Rastafari sabbatical studies, Rastafari sabbatical seder. Mm -hmm. And just recently, but here, let's address this right here because it's something that had come across our desk and we had checked out the video, very interesting video on Vlog. Um, we didn't write down the names and everything like that, but the, the subject matter, no doubt when you put it in your search on the, on the YouTubes or Google, this and that one and the next ones will come up. So we're rephrasing the question. The question was Ethiopians, well, are not African. Kind of a question, but a statement, question, statement, question, 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 question. Tiake, Tiake. Right? Mm hmm. Tiake na memilis. Okay, so let's explore this right here. Ethiopians are not African? Now, he pointed to in the video that we've seen, um, have pointed to, um, uh, a black and white, uh, I'm trying to remember exactly what the context of that was, but it's out there where some students from different parts of the world are discussing like topics of the day. I think it was back in maybe the 50s or 60s, roughly around maybe the 60s, right? 
the 60s, if not maybe part of the 50s or late 50s, but it's the 60s, right? And we'll seek to, you know, get the, the, the references for this for ones and ones. But if you look up this particular subject matter, you'll find links out there. And then you can trace those links and, you know, do what you need to do to archive, right? The ark, right? Put it in the ark, the archive. So Ethiopians, we say were not, were not. And what do you mean by African? In fact, we haven't even uploaded that particular video. Another vlog we did, ones and ones to know from the Ethiopian world, Ethiopian world net, um, YouTube channels to like Rastafari uh, sabbatical channels knows that we've addressed this, you know, kind of in season every, every now and then we, we address it, some of the basics, and then even add more evidence and more references bringing forward invoices not just receipts but invoices so we have invoices on this as well but this is going to be a first um you know like opening statement so to speak so the ethiopians were not at one time african because the continent that's called africa was called ethiopia all right that's ras yadinos ras iodonis here right this is yadin uh, addressing this here for the record, all right? Uh, some of the Chabarim Rastafari Rabbi, yes, I Rastafari. So the Ethiopians, they were not, were not. Now, some might still hold to this ancient truth, right? And the ancient truth of the matter is that the continent that's called today, that's called nowadays Africa, was not called that. The part of the continent was Africa, was Tunisia and the Libya. What some may refer to in looking at a map of Africa as the capstone, the capstone of the continent. That's where Africa was, right? Africa, right, is not what you think Africa is, right? Africa was a Roman province. So when we have all of our, especially nowadays with more access, knowledge that shall go to and fro and knowledge shall increase with the internet and modulation, demodulation, if we want to get into the science of it, you know, with all that's going on right now, I want to be able to find, you know, resources, right? Resources to get to the source, right? To get to the root of the particular matter. So there was a time when Ethiopia was the name of the continent that's called Africa. So the the African dude that was talking, you know, in his video and everything, and talking about West Africa, West Africa this, you know, he seemed like a West African fundamentalist, you know, but be that if it may, if it may, allegedly, right? So be that, you know what I mean? But really, really, he is a West Ethiopian. He's a West Ethiopian, and we need to begin to start to articulate in these terminologies. Some other terminologies from the Rastafari, right, yeshiva have come out and some of y'all are probably using it don't know like who really originated these you call like like neologism neologos right like like new word like a new word right the one who sits on the throne says i've made all things new right so here what we get is a failure of ones and ones that come out you know strongly or they're confused like how can ethiopians not be africans really don't know history african history so-called quote unquote right to the point where it was not called africa but ethiopia they don't understand that part of the history and what has happened and what africa was originally what was africa originally it was a roman province africa originally was a roman province so so we have to just grind a little bit here Right, and as some sometimes say, you know, I mean, we might ramble. This is not rambling, right? This is the, this is almost like ranting. It's a Rasta rant, a Rastafari rant, so to speak. Rasta rant, right? Restaurant, Rasta rant, right? So pick that up and, and and run with it if you will. But make sure you give tribute, do tribute to whom tribute is due, right? So you mean righteous, right? Not a criminal, not ratchet. So the Ethiopians, they were not. Right? They were not African because, simply put, the continent that's called today Africa was not Africa. Right? Africa was a Roman province in the north, the center of the north, where we have Tunisia and Libya today. Go check it out. Look at, look at some maps. Do some study. You can do a lot of good study if you have some discernment. 
like you know some hokma and and you know um <laughs> you know some tibeb tibeb amarinya tibeb you know amastawal you know or bina hokma and bina tabuna if you can really discern between bane between this and that you recognize this truth for yourself so this is what the so-called black consciousness community out there in in social media land right it's not a land it's no land but never mind never land anyway that's part of the plan too right but those out there the black conscious need to address this it doesn't mean it does not mean that we cannot or should not for so-called political purposes on the on the battlefield and certain basic nowadays identification but we should not get so comfortable with this roman white anglo-saxon protestant coming from their root this romanist right this romanist canaanite romanist right roman canaanite perspective or red esau red esau has joined they didn't read then esau married two canaanite women so you see what who, who really the white man is that's a whole other subject matter right there so the ethiopians are not african no that's that, that's not so his imperial majesty he basically made Ethiopia Africa. Let me say it again. That is Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie the first, right? And his government, the King of Kings government, made Ethiopia part of the African community of latter-day modern nations during that time during his visitation his days he shall shew who is the blessed only potentate right the king of kings the lord of lords yes i the conquering line of the tribe of judah so that is another that's our second point that we'd like to make here the first point is that not that ethiopians are not african in a political sense yes if we understand the various different battlefields Right? And the rules of engagement on these different battlefields to gain and to get the victory. So we see in those days there was victory for many African or, you know, nations. Nations on the continent that's called nowadays Africa. Right? And even with the OAU. Right? And the role of His Imperial Majesty's government. The fateful governments of His Imperial Majesty. In the latter days, you know, 74, 75, that's where you get the careless Ethiopians. Right? So we have to also understand timelines in history. Right? And that even though we are in this modern times, some are not dumb, deaf, and blind. Sumun, bukmun, and umun. You know, some are not dumb, deaf, and blind. Some can basically trace and recognize, okay, this is what's going on today, and this is how, you know, we need to understand this is the world that we are in today. But don't get so much in the world, you become of the world. I be in the world, not of the world. So when the, the African dude talking about Ethiopians, not African, and this and that, so forth and so on, and giving certain examples out there in social media land, right? some limited examples, but some examples all the same. We'll, we like to comment on what the, the Ethiopian youth said, you know, about the Israelites and the Ethiopians and the Israelites of Ethiopia connection. We've been saying that for years. The Habarim, no? We've been saying, you know, Chabarim Shali, you know, they understand, they know this as a truth, right? So these are the areas that, that now we could say many black people are becoming more conscious of, more aware about, and there are certain questions that are coming to heart and mind that need to be addressed and unraveled. So with the first question, Ethiopians were not African? Yes, there was a time that Ethiopians... Right? We're not African because the continent was known as Africa. Therefore, when we really gain the victory, is also gaining the, the mental, the psychological, right? the mind state, and also the narrative. Right? So ones who talk about the West Africans, no, you, you're West Romans. Right? You really, in truth, are West Ethiopians and South Africans, South Ethiopians. Right? And East Ethiopians, if we now look at a record or information and documentation that refer to these roots here. So that's the first, that's the first important question. So when did Ethiopia become African? First, 
That's the first, that's the first significant fact, fact. We call these fire facts, fire. Isat, Isat, um, you know, there's the uh, Afro-Shemitic, and we're going to touch on the language, the linguistics, so we can really begin to get a good understanding, a standing. So the standing here, right, the premise here, and the facts behind it, the evidence, right, the evidence, the exhibits forthcoming, we've also touched on it in various other videos. But here, just to kind of keep this still right here going, right, and kind of to zoom in on this particular subject matter, it's not that Ethiopians are not African, right, today for the geopolitical and the battlefield. We have to understand what the battle, right, of good over evil is all about and that charge of our divine father, of the real father of revolutionary and progressive, progressive Africa. Let's point that out. When we speak about Kedamawi, how the Salah being the father of Africa, not today's Africa, because today's Africa has turned away, had become like a, a, a father Akka, right? It's the father of Africa. Hear how all these dirty, these dirty N words be speaking against the Imperial Majesty out there on the YouTubes and social media. But we're going to touch on that as well, right? But, you know, let them be lunch meat for our lions, you know what I'm saying? But here, let's touch on. And the search, right? Let's touch on Ethiopians were not. And they were not because the continent of Africa, right? The continent of Africa today was called Ethiopia, right? In the about 500, was about, not even 400 of good years. We have maps that it's like 1700s, right? Some right bordering almost in the 1800s with Ethiopia still being defined and also the Ethiopic Oceanus Ethiopicus, right? The Oceanus Ethiopicus. So we have to really start to look at history, right? Outside of the 400 years. People say the 400 years is over, but you could take an uh, N-word, you know, the lost sheep will out of the 400 years, but you can't take the 400 years out of them, right? They still got the 400 years in them, right? You heard? <laughs> Right. Also, hail up to the Geechee Gullah, the Geechee Gullah sovereign nation. You know, that's that's the people on the maternal side. You know what I mean? And the Louisiana First Church of Rastafari, right? In Louisiana, New Orleans, New Orleans, right? To hail up to I and I roots on I and I paternal side. Now, even the Geechee and the Gullah, the Gullah, one time the people, the more Hamitic or Shemitic people known as the Gullah, at one time, today they call themselves Oromo because they find the terminology Gullah or Gala, Gala. Our people always say Gullah. So I'm looking and making that connection as well and just sharing some of these bits and bites with y'all. And if ones are interested, you know, check us out, LOJS.org, LOJS.org, right? Ones can hit the contact and link. Right for more ones and ones to kind of engage this. Also check the descriptions. Check the description now. If y'all, if any of y'all have sent anything, the last few days have been technological. A lot of technological things, you know, because we're using these platforms and everything. And one has to be savvy if one is 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 um, dealing with a lot of information. A lot of people are like sending links and videos and other things, and it's back and forth. Boom, 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 boom. The intel. So we also are calling on our brothers and sisters who are more savvy in the social media intel, right, to work on teams, LOJ teams, the line of Judah teams, right? But here, the first question, you know, the first question, a little bit of, of, of uh, I'm going to call it advertisement, but just, maybe it is, advertise it, like, like Peter Tosh, St. Peter said, right, <laughs> legalize it. You know, and I will advertise it, to advertise, to, to make mention of like the good news, the gospel, the good news of the King of Kings. So it's the King of Kings of Ethiopia, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. Gormawi, Kermawi, Haile Selassie, Nagusa Negeze, Ethiopia, Siyume, Xiaviha, who, my, and him and his government, I have to say his government, because ones like the brother Yilma and others played pivotal and vital roles, and they need to be mentioned in their work, right? Their work, their work for Negus Negus Ethiopia and for we, the black peoples of the world, but especially for the lost sheep of the Bait Yisrael, see, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, right? And there's many Israelites who understand the true connection of that anointed king, right? That anointed king, 
I ain't had anointed king. See, see that's the part that Allah won't leave out. They talk about the coronation of Haile Selassie first. Yes, but the, the key element of the coronation is that anointing. That is a link with the Moshiach, right? The Mashiach, the Messiah, right? Or called Christos in the Copto Koine Greek, right? They call it the Koine Greek, well, like the Copto Koine Greek, right? But getting to the root, the Mashiach, Mashiach. Like the Mashiach, the anointed, and thus we say over here in the, this Western dispersion, the diaspora, the Black Messiah. So the real Black Messiah is His Imperial Majesty, who has given that resurrection to the Messiahs, the Messiahs. Right? We could go into that prophecy there, that is in um, Abdiyah, Obadiah. Right, Obadiah, Obadiah, go into that prophecy there, and this is what we see happening even among many of the various different Hebrew and Hebrew Israelite camps. And even though we differ, there's ones that differ on certain points, and you see we go into certain, you know, um, teaching or maybe responses or clarifications on things that maybe the ones who alleged or slandered really didn't know the truth to give them the opportunity. Right, to have a metanoia, have a change of mind, to think differently. But anyway, the first question being somewhat, so when did, when did Ethiopians or Ethiopia become African, right? In that, what one's referred to as that Pan-African, in the Pan-African resurrection, the Pan-African resurrection. In truth, it was in the Pan-Ethiopian, Pan meaning like across all of the continent that was once known as Ethiopia, right? As Ethi we can't dismiss that if that's the historical record of fact, right? This is the fire fact. Hashtag fire. This is the fire fact, right? If that is a record of fact, then we have to revision. We have to we have to think differently, right? We have to think differently, right? Think differently. Right? The kingdom of the king of kings is at hand, is at yad, is at biyad, biyad. Right? It is hand. Right? And I am ras yadinos, ras yadon. Right? Yadon. Right? So here, right, Ethiopians became part of that African community of nations in that struggle against colonialism, right? Western Gentile imperialism, right? Against colonialism and against against even the neo-colonialism see now we're in this period of a neo-colonialism this is why i said from the very beginning of this vlog rewind to check it out again you know we mentioned very clearly this neologisms right the neologis neologo like a new new words because words a, a word fitting a proper word proper description right and see, this is where ones will say, well, even though it's Africa today, and blah, 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 they, they want to gloss over that and then talk about their scholars. How can you be a scholar and that fact is not a very, a very significant fact, right? And it becometh a factor in what is retarding, right, the fuller fullness of our liberation, right? The black messiahs, right, You're talking about the black messiahs. Right? Because once the black messiah is risen, he rises up the brotherhood of the black messiahs. This is why when we speak about the Israelites of Ethiopia and in that black and white um, video, um, don't recall his name right now, but um, we have it noted in our notes. We, we shared it on the WhatsApp connection, also available, that WhatsApp connection. Check it out. You know, we also be going into more there, right, just to communicate the basic information my, to the like Talmudin, the disciples, to the disciples, and to the brethren, so they can then do their own fact checking, right? Do their fact checking. So this is also like a fact checker too, right? When so the Ethiopians are not, no, were not, and and the reasons why wasn't because of a bias. People think oh, it was a bias. They thought they were different, better. See, that's what the white man put out, or, or the Gentiles. They put that out, and many West Africans and other Africans believe that when they say, woo, 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 Ethiopia is not African. Ethiopia is not African. Oh, they don't think they're African. They think they're better. They think. And see, this is the same thing they've been doing repeatedly. See, this ain't nothing new when you study our story called history, right? And you get to know the mystery mm, <laughs> of his divine, his divine majesty. In we, 
right? It's, it's in we, the spirit, the spirit of truth is in I and I. So that is the first fact right there. And having some more of the exhibits to really show, to go into the detail, because there's many ones that are going to say, oh, oh, he don't know what he's talking about, he wrong. No, that's not true. But we already pointed you to facts. All you need to do is look at the, the Roman province, look up the Roman province of Africa. Just look up the Roman province. Look at what the date and the time of that was. In history, according to the dating and the timing that, that we keep today, the Gregorian time, and just, just, just get a perspective. That's before 400 years, right? And then the next thing you need to look at is when the continent was known as Ethiopia, the continent of Africa, on the ancient maps. And yes, these might be just maps of the Western Gentile, you know, white Anglo-Saxon Protestants, the Anglo-Americans, Babylon, and the daughter of Babylon today. These are still facts, evidence. Now, if one says, well, this fact is not a fact, it's not really a real evidence, and prove it, then we can move on to something else. But now, this is where we, this is what we're dealing with, right? Right? This is what 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 we're dealing with right here. So, that's the first fact, and then we were directed to by the Holy Spirit, the Isla Irit, the Spirit of Truth. Right, to check this out here. Let's just do this right here, brothers and sisters. Something had okay, there it goes right there. Yeah. Yeah. As we do this video and also get ready for the podcast, right? The podcast. Check out the podcast. If you miss the podcast or so the hours are different than in the region of the world that you're in, you can always check it out on the replay. Right, so we're putting out the replay links, right, and seeking to. We do have an app, there's also an app. Check out the app as well, right? The app is also a great way to check out the replay. So, the app also is in the description free, free app, uh -huh. free app. So, here we're going to now point to an, another document. This is Selected Speeches. Now, we also have the Selected Speeches books. Right, the selected speeches book. So ones who want to and need to get the selected speeches, check out the selected speeches. You need to get a copy of selected speeches, brethren. This is from May 26, 1954. And this is in personal diplomacy, a section of selected speeches. So this is official. This is a government, Nagusa Nagas government document. This is official government document, government of the King of Kings document, as we represent that small stone that's cut out of the mountain, right? The rifle and true Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. And also, we're going to put a link there for the rifle, the true Ethiopian, the one that represents the millennial, you know, the membership movement, right? The membership movement worldwide. We don't use that term global, bal, and global so much. But here, this was addressed to the U.S. Congress. So these are all factual documents on the record. And I think it's probably one of the first times that we have a black man, right, addressing, you know, addressing the U.S. Congress in such a capacity. This is the original, goes to the original prophecy of, of Rastafari, right? Even before Rastafari was locksman and Rastafari was beardsman. Those are important precepts. According to Ha Torah, right? John's direction instruction, according to his glory, right? He says, For my part, I glory in the Bible, right? So, here, 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 let's touch on this right here. Let's touch on this right here. So, this is his, um, his address, and it's important to note what he said in this particular address to the U.S. Congress. This is speaking to us black people here in this diaspora, here in this North country. This is directly speaking to us. One may say maybe the intelligentsia first, those who do have the knowledge, whether they are academic or certified by the system of things, right? Because a lot of people put a lot of stock in that, and it just shows us what the prophecy been saying all along, right? So we have to keep moving, keep moving forward, right? So in this particular document, His Majesty points out, Gurumawi Nagusa Nagas John Hoy, he points out some very important facts, Right? These facts help to illuminate and guide our biblical you know, point of view, our biblical perspective. Right? We can give some personal testimonies like, we, yeah, we in the Bible, we, we in the Bible, and, yeah, in prophecy, and we also in the Bible. Right? We in the Bible, in the study of the Bible. Right? But this is from a different, this is from a, a, a being, being born again. 
right? That being born again in spirit and in truth, right? Being born again in spirit and in truth, right? So right here, 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 the Ethiopians were not, right? So we gave two historical um, facts, right? You, you can look it up. We'll, we'll present it more in detail as we go forward. But it was important for us to touch on this and touch on this now and share this, you know, share this as far and wide like share and subscribe please like brothers and sisters we should say that maybe at the outset right there because some might listen for more or less but i give thanks to all the ones and ones who are checking it out and also um there's some other platforms where we have a better opportunity to like engage one and one there's even a clubhouse that some brothers heal up to ross minulik heal up to brother miguel right um also um to the brother, 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 brother. Ah, uh, I want to check my WhatsApp right now. To the next brother in as well, and the other brothers that were there. You know, um, you know, some of us sometimes. I'm not saying it's anonymous, but you know, it's just dealing with the work. Even I and I self one says you got to mention you know who's speaking these truths. You know, but we don't want to get caught up like some people do on that level. So it all become by like you know that they've done these things they might have. But, but they're kind of stopping them from doing more work that, that can be helpful in the liberation of the hearts and minds. It's a heart and mind campaign, brethren, right? So here, His Majesty says some important things. I mean, look at the time. Do a time check right, right here because we're a little while before the podcast. I right? don't have much time. We're going to wrap up this pretty soon. Right? If one's like this and would like us to go into more, on this particular subject matter, you know, just to, just show it, you know, by liking, sharing, sharing the video, sharing the links, you know, tagging the links elsewhere on your Facebook, social media platform, you know, um, also, you know, contacting, linking us, you know, about certain topics and subject matters. And if ones have already sent in subject matters, which I, I think I've seen a few, right, one or two, or no, a, a few, maybe, yeah, a couple of inquiries. I don't know whether it's directly in response to what we have put in the description, but check out the description. So here, where's Matsy address Congress? It was some part of this that we highlighted because it's, it's quite long. You know, it's a quite long uh, a speech, an address. But it says that the Messiah, right? The power of the real Messiah is his words, right? His words, you know, by his words. You know, and the spirit of his mouth, right? This is how he, he, he conquers and overcomes the enemy. This is one of the basic scriptural biblical ways. So we look at the selected speeches, and we have selected speeches, L-O-J-S. Check out L-O-J-S.org, brothers and sisters. We have various books there, selected speeches to get a hard copy. Get a hard copy, you know, on our IGs and the brothers and sisters that help to um, share and disseminate. One can check out, you know, get a soft copy, the PDF copy, both at Rastafari TV, Hail Up to uh, Fanai Sunlight, you know, matriarch of the technology of the MT, right, the MIT, we can say, but the site media, Iowa Digital Angel, right, I'm a Digital Angel that's part of her business and what she does, and please, um, you know, support, pray for her, you know, and and support the works, the works of I and I liberation and liberation of I and I people as well. Rastafari TV, hope to be sharing some of the best of the best from Rastafari sabbatical there, right? As well, some remixes, right? Because some of this was like raw, like right here. And then a remix of this can include some of the relative um, pictures, you know? But this is just going forward because we're getting in that podcast, that podcast zone right now. Right, so here, um, a lot of important things, you know, a lot of important things are found here. But he says, a moment ago, I remarked, this is my relative terms, relative terms. So check the mathematics of the relative terms. A moment ago, I remarked that for you, Ethiopia must appear to be a small and remote country. Right, he goes into that and, and gives some very important um Earth, like I said, the earth is Yahweh, Yahweh Hayes, in the fullness thereof, some, some geographic information. 
but then he goes over here, right? He goes over here. Um, it says, unlike many other countries, Ethiopia has long been a nation of small rather than of large landowners. Moreover, a profoundly democratic tradition has assured in the past, as it assures today, the rise to the highest post of responsibility in government of men of the humblest origins. These are just some of the highlights we have here. The next section is factor in world politics. This is his Imperial Majesty's May 26, 1954 address to, I think, both houses of, you know, the U.S. Congress. So the factor in world politics, right? After stating our basic two particular points, one point, I think we had two points, and this kind of links with the second point of, so since Ethiopians were not African because the continent prior to these latter 400 years was not known as Africa prior to this this 400 years. So remember, the 400 years is not just looking at the clock, but it's also the state of mind. That's why it says in the word in, Ma in um, Genesis, Genesis chapter 15, Genesis chapter 15, it says about the 400 years, and also that nation will I judge, and they shall come out with great substance. Mm-hmm. And it also says in Genesis, to Yehuda, to Judah, right? Yehuda abroad, Judah abroad is a so-called black American Negro, right? That's the, of the 400-year generation. That's why I have to heal up the Geechee and the Gullah, also Blackfoot, Blackfoot as well, right? Just have to make those links so that the message is even more clear, right? Especially as we see, you know, the time coming about and recognize what our role and responsibility Right, ironically, spirits as soldiers, right, doing as ordered, right. So here we highlight this part right here as well, where His Imperial Majesty states right here about factor in world politics. However, in yet perhaps a broader sense, is Ethiopia's geographical position of significance. So also the answer of Ethiopia and Africa. Ethiopia became part of the African community of nations during the time of the formation of the OAU, right? During that time, and as Ethiopia increased in its activities, Ethiopia, in a sense, in time of His Majesty, was almost like, the, we could say, the true, the real Israel, right? The Israel in the Horn of Africa. If you can understand, I'm not looking at the outer things or those who say they are and are not. I'm looking at the inner things, the spiritual thing, that purpose, right? That purpose, right? Being liberated or being free, having, you know, bala sultane, you know, having authority, right? And not being ruled over, right? Change their perspective, right? Under the wise guidance of Kermawi Hala Selassie. Yeah, Yehuda Moa Anbesa to go forth, right, and the gospel of liberation, right, against neo, you say, colonialism, colonialism, fascism, imperialism, that enslavement, reversing the, the tide, as it were, during that time. And that was significant to, that was phase one, right, because some people say, well, all that happened then, how come nothing is happening now? You got to watch the scoffers and the mockers. Right, but if that's a sincere question, then we can go into the 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 history, and by understanding the history, we can see prophecy. Right, so here his message is the geographical position of significance through her location on the shores of the Red Sea. Now, the Red Sea we know biblically as the Yam Suf or the Etra Bahir, Etra Etra Eritrean Bahir Eritrean Sea, and in the Horn of East Africa. Ethiopia has profound historical ties with the rest of the Middle East, what's called today the Middle East, as well as with Africa. And you have to understand what is being said here, and this is different than, say, West Africa or West, West Ethiopia. I want to say West Ethiopia, I'm talking about West Africa. Right? In West Africa, what was occurring and going on in West Africa? Right? What was occurring and going on in West Africa? Right? was that, well, before the enslavement of the Hebrews and the Israelites, right, because that was all part of that prophecy, 
but it wasn't just from West Africa or West Ethiopia. It was from other regions of the world. Remember, we were scattered into four regions, brought over here to this Western Hemisphere of the Americas and the Caribbean. So his majesty is stating that Ethiopia's location on the shores of the Yam Suf or the Etor Abahir, the Sea of Reeds, the Red Sea, the Eritrean Sea, and in the Horn of East Africa, Ethiopia has profound historical ties with the rest of the Middle East. What's called the Middle East. We got to look at the map so we can see it's like a 1040 region. As well as with Africa. In this respect, new paragraph, in this respect, she stands in a completely unique position. Her culture and social structure were founded in the mingling of her original culture and civilization with the Hamitic and Shemitic migrations into Africa from the Arabian Peninsula. These are facts. Now, some of y'all may not know these facts from your Western Gentile education or miseducation, but one to have to recognize that there's only half the story. This is why as we speak about Ethiopia and the Israelites of Ethiopia, we always maintain the manuscripts. Oh, about the manuscripts. That's why now that we have the opportunity to republish and print certain documents and certain manuscripts, we do so and we encourage the Chavarim and the brothers of Talmudim, Dekamazamurit, you know, to get a copy and also, you know, do like book, you know, kind of book things, things about books. Books are so very important when we understand our coming up from that enslavement. That's why I hear of the Geechee, the Gullah. You know, my people, the Geechee Gullah nation, right? Because the Gullah and the Gala is where we like to go to make the next connection of our people at home and abroad, right? Ethiopians at home and abroad, are ye not as the children of Israel unto me, O children of the Ethiopians? The Bnei Kushim, the Bnei Yisrael. This is what his majesty is speaking about, the Hamitic and the Shemitic migrations. Now, even one might say before then, there was already that connection even in old Mitzrayim or Gibbets, old Egypt, right? But that's a whole other matter. He says, and in fact, today our language, Amharic, right? The Amharic Amarinya, right? Amarinya Kwankwa is a member of that large family of Hamitic and Semitic or Semawi or Shemitic tongues and therefore intimately related to Hebrew and Arabic. You see right there, so on a linguistic studies level, you can see that LOJ society was seeking to prep the Chabarim, the Messiahs, with this knowledge and with this info, with this intel, right? With this intel, right? You know, call I, I am the intel minister with this intel. This is divine, this is the divine intelligence we need on our divine heritage. So right there, he's showing that, you know, so the whole Africa thing, since that came from a Roman domination, remember where the Romans were not able to dominate. They was not able to dominate the Israelites of Ethiopia, the highland Judeo-Christian Davidic Solomonic civilization of the highland. And yes, there's many peoples. So let's recognize that Ethiopia, there's many peoples. This is what His Majesty is saying in this in essence, right? There's, so once again, he says the Hamitic and Semitic migrations into Africa from the Arabian Peninsula. That's all we was hearing that that, that guy, um, what's his name, Reggie on the side and thing, and he was talking about like like Arabic and this and that. And the other brother was trying to tell him that the Arabs or the people that you call the Arabs, original Arabs, were black people. The people we have today is the influence of Hindi, like the India Hodu, Hodu in the Hebrew say Hodu or India. And also the stands, like Afghanistan, Pakistan, the other, Uzbekistan, right, the stands. And then also historically from the Ottoman Turkish period, right, along with, right, we, so we had the Ottoman Turks. We have to understand their role, right, and then certain peoples of the East, and mainly the, the Hindu, and then also the Greek influence. Because many of the Egyptians also have that Greek, they're part of that historical admixture. And any of y'all who study Kemet, later Kemetic history, like the decline of Kemet, where Kemet was becoming a base Mitzrayim, a base Mizraim, a base nation, right? According to the prophecy, but we can see historically how it all came about, right? We can then also recognize the Greek influence, right? The Greco-Roman influence in those part of the world. The part of the world that was not dominated by that influence was Ethiopia, 
Right? It was Tob, the Tob land, the good land, the Tob land, Tob, Tobia. Right? It was Ethiopia, Ethiopia. So as Matthew is saying that even the Amharic language is a member of that large family. So we're talking about family, right? Of Hamitic and Semitic tongues and therefore intimately related to Hebrew and Arabic. Now, this was not nothing new to some of the people in the United States. It depends on their education and their awareness. We noticed that a lot of top echelon people when I was going to school, like Hess, Robert Hess, he was a big time Ethiopian like um, um, a researcher and ones like Fetlavich and others. So we can see how ones like, um, like, like Eliza, you know, Ben Yehuda and different ones were able to do what they did with Hebrew because a lot of them were studying to get a true context of the Nikodot and uh, the pointings and other things. Were studying the Ethiopic in comparison with the Amharic. So his Matthew says a whole lot right here linguistically. But then, speaking of the linguistics, then his Matthew says this right here. We're going to sum up this right here, brothers and sisters. He says, indeed, at one time, Ethiopia extended to both sides of the Red Sea. Ethiopia extended to both sides. You get some maps on that as well. To both sides of the Etara Bahir in the Amharic or the Yam Suf in Hebrew, as well as north to Upper Egypt. You know, Upper Egypt is close to Ethiopia, and then you have Lower Egypt. It was therefore not without reason that during the Middle Ages, the emperor was known as, now in Amharic, we don't have a word emperor. That's more like a Roman terminology speaking this, 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 this English or translating into English. The proper term is Nagusa Neges, King of Kings, was known as, quote, he who maintains order between the Christians and the Muslims. So that judge function, Danya, Danya, Don Hoy, John Hoy, Danya, a profound comprehension of and sympathy with other states of the Middle East naturally inspires Ethiopian national policies. Not just in the in the in his times where he shoes the blessing only potentent, but even from earlier times, we gotta note that there for the record. Right. On the other hand, 3,000 years of history make of Ethiopia a profoundly African state in all that the term implies. So you know that the term terminology, the implication, but it's now we're on this battlefield right, of liberation for these states that were under enslavement and colonial, like colonialism, imperialism, European, Gentile, counterfeit Christianity, imperialism. Right. So he goes on and says, in the United Nations, she has been to the forefront in the defense of Africa's racial, right? That racial and the racism, ism, schism, economic, money, finances, and social interests. Then there's another section where he says unique link. We're just going to point today. He says again that, you know, Ethiopia should be the filter known as he who maintains order between the Christians, the Christian notion, and the Muslim. Why the Middle East is so jacked up today is because that was almost totally removed and that was a part of prophecy as well. Right? He who let will let until he's taken out of the way. Right? And then we see this kind of antichrist going against those progressive, the forward movement of his majesty and those of that righteous generation. That's a part of our history as black people, even as Hebrews and Israelites, if you really truly know yourself and you're not in denial in spiritual Egypt. Ethiopia is the state having the largest Christian population and is by far the largest Christian state in the Middle East. Now, also let's note this for the record. We're going to get up out and out of here um, that when we speak about Christian or Jewish or Yehudi, but Christian in particular, don't get confused with the Western Gentile Christianity you used to or to the latter day Christianity. So when we're pointing to Ethiopia, we're pointing to prior in the historical testimony of fact, the fire facts, we are pointing to the pre-1975, 74, 75 period of time. Because we see that this war is even reaching all the way up there. You know what I mean? Even up to heaven, that's what they sought to reach. Remember with the Tower of Babal, Glow Babal, Glow Babel, 
Globabel, right? The Globabelism. You're going to make a hashtag on that, Chavarin, Globabel, right? So he points this out and says, in fact, Ethiopia is unique among the nation of the world in that it is today the one remaining Christian state that can trace her history unbroken as a Christian polity from the days when the Roman Empire itself was still a vigorous reality. So as Matthew is telling us about the Roman Empire, that is still around. See, people don't really recognize the connection of Britannia, right? Britannia and even Babylon and, and, and the daughter of Babylon, America. So we point that out right there, right? Because there's more to get into on this, but those are significant areas that if we follow through, it will further give us the, the details of why my Ethiopians did not submit to the, the African terminology until it was necessary in the war for liberation. Because you have to understand that some places in Africa came under that Roman, that, that Greco-Roman domination. Right? Some nation resisted. When we look at ancient kingdoms in Africa, we've got to do a whole study on that, Chavarin. Right? The ancient kingdom. We had a Yehudi kingdom in Africa, right, that even remained Yehudi for a very long time. And we also had a Judeo-Christian kingdom, that connection with Solomon, the Queen of Sheba, and that those ancient orders and those, as we call them, the Israelites of Ethiopia, right, the Israelites of Ethiopia. Now, like we said, there's other peoples. And even today, we see a lot of different tribalism among other people, and we hear about some Hamitic, 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 and the Shemitic. But Matthew is already saying that Ethiopia was in touch with that Hamitic, that that Hamito Semitic, or that Afro Asiatic. That's another way of uh, when looking at it in a slightly different dimension. You know, within certain academia studies and circles, we point that out because we have to be aware of these terminologies and then break them down to what they really mean and how to utilize it. So when we understand that. Ethiopia is being true to itself, its history, and need to get off of the, the propaganda of white supremacy that goes out there and say, oh, they don't think that they're black. Now, even maybe a few careless Ethiopians might get caught up in that. But when we check the historical record, both from Ethiopians themselves, being a literate culture, you know, and writing and preserving scrolls and manuscripts, even if they had to rewrite them because, you know, parchment wears out, right? the testimony that Ethiopia gives and then also the outside world as well that bears witness and get into the Prester John. What's the truth about the Prester John? Because you hear this Moorish talk, right? But that's also another level we have to kind of touch on, show the facts, the evidence, right? And let the chips so-called, so to speak, fall where they may, right? But so the Ethiopians were not African, but why are they so now, right? What, what has happened now? And we have to understand when it first came into the community of nations, it was a support for that liberation from racial, economic, and social interests. When we understand that the world today wasn't quite like the world even like, um, like 60, 70, 70 or so years ago. Right? And we know it over here in our own black people's history in the Americas and the Caribbean. We see certain time periods or certain forward movements. Whether one go to the, the black John the Baptist, Marcus and Messiah Garvey days or to even other days before and after that. You know what I mean? Buffalo Soldier in the heart of America. That's that link, you know, with the, with the Geechee Gullahs. Right. And the three victories against the United States Army, which inspired even in part the Haitian liberation, the, the Haitian Revolution. Right. And other revolutions as well. So these are aspects of our Yehuda or Judah in exile. See, we are Yehuda. So that the Israelites, the Hebrew Israelites are correct with. Right. Especially those Negro tribes. There is connection that from our own studies we can prove as well. So when that Ethiopian youth speaks and he's talking about we are Israelites and don't just look at our, our skin being burnt, so forth and so on. He's referring to the, the Greekization of the Ethiopic Tobia. Because Tobia, right? He said there was Tobia. Like in the Bible, they have Tobiah, Tob, Tob. You even see there's a land of Tob. So there's the Ethiopian connection on both sides, 
right, of the Red Sea. That also was brought out from selected speeches of Imperial Majesty. So get a copy, get a soft copy, and when the I of them can, when you can, get a hard copy. Right, we have it at lojs.org. The hard copies, I think the soft copy link. I know the soft copies are over at Rastafari TV. Gonna hopefully speak and try to make some links there so one can also get a hard copy. Right, it's very, very important. There's a lot of gems. Right, there's a lot of gems in the, in the word sound, selected speeches, the utterances. Right, the divine utterances. Because in the beginning, in the beginning was the word. So we have to get our our logistics you know our our logistics right and accurate right get our logistics so that's getting the word and the context right so that's the long and short of it right so ethiopia still has certain unique historical roots there's a lot of warfare that's going on and has been going on in ethiopia since the rebellion against nagus and Agas, since the great transgression against the king of kings there's a whole younger generation that are of Ethiopians, native Ethiopians that are reaching out to the same truth of the real Rastafari, real Rastafari, right? But they have to come to Yehuda, to Judah, to get that fuller fullness, right? Because this is where it begins. It says in the prophecy concerning Yehuda, it's the so-called Negro Black American, right? That's why all the tribes are here from all over the diaspora, right? So the significance of who we are, and then when we go about for necessary purposes to deal with geopolitical um, implications of various things, nationhood, so-called sovereignty, you know, all these subject matters are clearly already defined for us. And a lot of ones are trying to do it their own way, but really need to get the teaching of his divine majesty so we can make progress, so we can be that generation of those, right, who seek thy face, right, you know, seek the face of the Hilehim, right, the Elohim, the power of Yaakov, Elohe Yaakov. So, I'm like a, I'm like a for the Ethiopian, you know, Amhara and Amharic speakers. But definitely, I think a peace needs to be um, brokered between those two parties over there. And it's the lion of the tribe of Judah, I and I, with I and I unique history being of the, you know, the children of Israel and recognizing that prophecy in Amos 9 and 7. Some more on this right now. About to just go a little less than an hour right here, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers. Because it's important for us to know our real roots, right, and the real study. Just to have the story that, sadly, a lot of black scholars, even nowadays scholars on certain platforms, even the Sarnetta platform, a lot of them miss this. A lot of them really don't go in on this. And a lot of pseudo-academic, pseudo-intellectualism is put out there. Right, have them address that the continent being known as Ethiopia on the maps. Right, therefore, how could the Ethiopians be African when the continent was known as Ethiopia? And then, if you accept this blindly, like you're in it and you're of it, we're really in the world, not of the world. If you become of the world, then, then we have to address you different and speak to West Ethiopians and South Ethiopians and East Ethiopians because when we understand the unifying factor in the real progressive African, what's called African liberation, it was because of Ethiopia at that time. See, we have to look at that time. That's what the prophecy says in Timothy, in his times, right? That's why I point out from the very beginning, the Metzhafe Hanok, the book of Enoch for the first and the second coming, or what some might say the two messiahs, or Judaically, the Moshiach ben Yosef and the Moshiach ben David. Right, Ben Dawid, right, the son of David, the greater David, the greater son. So more right here, here, here on this, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers. Once again, like, share, and subscribe. Check out the um, the links, the first part of the links in the description. You know, the contact link information. Also follow up on, you know, LOJS.org, checking out the book, the hard copy of selected speeches of his imperial majesty. Right, the soft copy available at L at L O J S L O J S dot O R G. Also on Rastafari TV as well. And the line of Judah, Ja Willen will have a platform and a podcast and certain things, you know, from that platform. Things are still underway. Need more, you know, laborers, you know, the, the field is, is ripe to harvest. Need more co laborers in the vineyard. So check out the the links, you know, if ones can be co laborers, like, share, please and subscribe 
you know, if one is willing, if one is not a straight up hater, then it'd be, you know, <laughs> be gone, right? But anyway, anyway, right there, there, there. Um, so here, this is on this right here. Oh, they even share the, the latter part of this, right? Let me ex let me explain. Yeah, that's what he begins off saying. These two Ethiopian youths, they give an accurate testimony. Maybe over time, they have gotten kind of like, you know, maybe over time they have gotten, you know, like, like a lot of things reversed over the years from 74, 75. Right. We went through a whole thing. We could talk about American, black American, our story up here. Right. Because a Rastafari, I have to rep, you know, the hood, Yehuda, the Huda, right? The hood, Yehuda, Judah over here in this region in the Americas, right? Caribbean and, you know, Benjamin and Lewi. Right. Also the hill of Yisakar, you know what I mean? Because there's ones and ones. Of course, there's other regions. Right. But this is a new way. Right, of looking at the old truth. Right, so right here, let me explain. So, what he's explaining is interesting because a lot of ones that hear some of the Hebrew Israelites speak about being Hebrew Israelites and not Africans in that sense is, in essence, what this brother, these brothers are saying. And ones are kind of laughing it off because of the ignorance of the Western Gentile, you know, the proverbial wool over your eyes. Right, because the first point right there about the continent of, of, of Ethiopia, the continent, you know, the continent <laughs> of Ethiopia right there blows that whole African thing. In the, and Africa was a Roman province. These are all um, um, talking points or searching search words. Right, Africa, Roman province. Go look it up. Africa, Roman province. Right. So these even these West Africans or West Ethiopian, they're careless, too, as careless Ethiopian, because they're not really connecting those dots. And it's maybe no fault initially, but hopefully they may check this out and check it out for themselves, because it still brings us into a unifying. There's that unifying factor right there. And also now seeking to also help right, the faithful Ethiopians that are going through their tribulation as well. That's why the LOJ. The Lion of Judah, Yehuda Moan Besa Machiber, to help to even negotiate, so to speak, you know, if one's parties, you know, the two sides, right? Because important for like the, the you know, the the Ormo Amhara, right, and the Tigra, or the Tigra and the Amhara and the Ormo to get together, right? I mean, I mean, it's really very, very important. But so in the Lion of the Tribe of Judah, they can really do that. Right, and his sons, right, the spiritual sons and daughters, the Habarim, the Wendemoch, the Wende Mamach, you know, the Wende Mamach Machiber, right, in Yanen, yes, I, but the sister as well amongst us. So, anyway, look more, look more, gonna ride up. Oh, 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 we went over that hour mark. So, here, 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 just to get a fuller full right here for the still, yes, I, we be out.